Back in Taiwan, one of the biggest causes of healthcare problems is pollution, and there's a lot of it, as Stephen can smell and see. This is Taipei's famous, or perhaps infamous, scooter waterfall. It's one of the main routes into central Taipei for thousands of commuters every day. It is mind-boggling how many mopeds there are here. Thousands of them, they just keep on coming. And you know what, you really get a sense of just how much pollution that these guys are probably causing because it stinks, it's horrible. And I think when you're walking around the city you don't notice, but here you really get a sense of it. It's really quite disgusting. It's not often that you can see, smell and even feel the pollution in a place. This is an extreme example of a problem that's a growing issue, not only in Taiwan, but around the world. Imagine sitting at a, at a stoplight behind a gas scooter that is puffing, you know, puffing just toxic gas into your face every day. This is what people have to go through every day because they didn't have any other option. Air pollutants will affect your health, especially for the respiratory system. Pollution and congestion is becoming a very, very big problem for us as, we, as everybody's moving into cities and living on top of each other. So I've come to Taipei's Institute of Information Science to find out how they're tackling air pollution here in Taiwan. Dr Chen is one of the founding researchers behind Airbox. The idea is pretty simple. Help people better understand and tackle the pollution around them by teaching them to make their own DIY low-cost air sensors. Since launching in 2015, they've built a network of thousands of community-run air quality sensors across the island. Initially, uh, when people start to use the local sensors uh, to sense their environment, they found a lot of interesting findings which are never reported by the governments. So initially, the government doesn't like the, <laughs> the results. But, but finally, they, they just realized, well, that's the, the real environment people are living. Today, there are over 4,000 of their pollution sensors around Taiwan, including one in every primary and secondary school. Some schools may change the schedule, so if the air pollution uh, is more severe, then they will cancel the outdoor activities. Research like this has revealed that there are a few major sources of pollution in Taiwan, the usual suspects like industry, power generation and transport, but also a few surprises. Things like pollution blown across from mainland China and some sources you might not expect at all. In Zhanghua, also in central Taiwan, there are some new devices. They always show you uh, purple color. That's very ah. bad, very bad. And the reason, so someone report, the reason is the temples. Oh, ah. yeah. they went out to Be investigate and they found, yeah, because they found the, the source. City. So what was going on in the temples? Well, by going and taking a look, the community discovered the culprit, traditional incense burning. You know, in Taipei, uh, the two major temples, the Longshan Temple and the Xin Tian Gong, there is no incense burning anymore. Okay. Yeah, because they also install uh, air bugs and then after some observation, they decide to, to cancel. So it cancel. makes a real difference knowing about yeah. the impact. Yeah, right. Solving a problem like pollution almost certainly means changing the way we do things as humans. Remember this place? Well, this is the same spot a few weeks later. And believe it or not, a good chunk of those bikes aren't producing any pollution at all. This is a publicity stunt for Gogoro, a Taiwanese startup that's pioneering the uptake of electric scooters in Taiwan. Taiwan has the highest density of scooter per capita anywhere in the world, as everybody's moving into cities and living on top of each other. And the need for adopting electric transportation as a cleaner mode of transportation. But here comes the problem, chicken and egg, right? Without the proper infrastructure, nobody would ever adopt a mob mobility solution that is electric because charging in these big cities are next to impossible. And this is Gogoro's solution to that problem. Riders own special electric bikes, but not the batteries inside them. Instead, when they're running low on power, they just visit a station like this to swap out their flat battery and pick up a fully charged one. A subscription of around $10 to $30 a month gives you access to any of the 1,400 swap stations around Taiwan. The more you pay, the further you can go. 
So Eric here has very kindly agreed to give me a ride around the block on one of their scooters. And you know what? It does feel a little bit different. The sound is slightly different. There's kind of a high pit, higher pitch whine rather than the chug of a, a motor. Uh, and otherwise, though, it feels pretty much like a normal moped. I visited Gogoro's head office just as they were getting ready to launch their newest top secret scooter. This is our new baby. Right. With a lighter weight, colourful designs and a grab bag of accessories, Gogoro is trying to expand the reach of scooters beyond traditional riders. But with a price tag of around $2,000 and just one battery instead of two, it might not be for everyone. The, the fact that the range is a bit smaller, do you think that, that matters? It, we see people riding about 15, 20 kilometres a day uh, on average in Taiwan. Uh, this vehicle can provide about 70 to 80 kilometres, so you're talking about three or four days between swap. Um, we think that's plenty. Gogoro estimate that their customers have saved 80,000 tonnes of CO2 between them. That's roughly 25,000 across the world flights. There's no one magic solution to society-wide problems like pollution, but it's encouraging to see how Taiwan is leading the way on finding some new ideas.